Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Publisher. In this module, I want to have a look at how to mail merge a newsletter. So first of all, I'm going to select new and then I'm selecting built-in and then you've got the categories that you can scroll through and find newsletters. And once you find newsletters, when you go in there, you find lots and lots of different types. I'm just going to pick this first one and create this one. So what you have is four pages as a starting point on this newsletter, center pages and then the back page. Um, I'm not going to do any of the change any of the text, but obviously you would change the text, your title and everything. On the back page, it's got my business information. But what I want to do is I want to insert a page. So I've got a blank page that I can do the mail merge onto. So if I go insert page, insert page, let's go for more. So I want number of pages one after current page and just a blank page. Okay. So there I get a blank page at the end, which has got no text boxes or picture frames or anything on it. Now that's what I'm going to put the mail merge information on. So what I'm thinking here is that this newsletter, no matter how many pages it has, will have a blank page at the back, which could go in a, a windowed envelope, uh, A4 windowed envelope, and the address to the person it's going to go to would be in that window. So to start the mail merge process, you go into the mailings tab and you have to select recipients. Now you've got two options or three options. Type a list yourself where you are actually creating a list from scratch. And I'll just show you how that works. So you just basically type in the list there and then save this. Um, you can customize the columns, add, move things up or down, rename. So for example, you might want to rename state if you're in the UK to county, for example, and zip code to postcode. And you can add fields here as well if you want, or remove fields. So you might not want all this information, um, country or region, you might want to get rid of that, but I'll click OK to that for now. So you just fill that in. As you get to the end, you can go new entry, new entry, etc., and it saves it as a, an access table. Uh, I'm not going to use that one. I'm just going to cancel this off. I'm going to use a database that I've already got. So I'm going to pick the second option. But before I do that, I'll just talk about Outlook contacts. If you've got Outlook contacts, you can bring them into the merge. The only problem I find with Outlook contacts is there's so many fields, so many different field names. It's quite hard sometimes to get the correct ones in to your merged uh, document. So it's doable, but it's a bit messy. It's probably better to get it from a table that you've created with an address list in that's a bit more organized than perhaps what a Outlook contact list is because it has lots of different phones, lots of different potential addresses and all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to go for this option and just need to scroll to find a database. So company records is where it is and it's address details. There's a few records in there and you get the same box coming up. Um, obviously, it's already populated with all these, and that's the name of the database where they come from. So if I needed to add to this list, I would have to go into there and edit, or I could open it in Access and edit in Access and add records in there, and then it would pick it up. So that's the list I want. You've got options of sort and filter in this list um, before it even comes into the merge, if you so wish. Every column has got the sort uh, options or advanced you can just filter things as well i'm not going to do that for this little session so I'll click ok to that that's what i want so now i just need to position the mail merge field so i've either got this option where i can start positioning individual fields which i'm not going to use so if you watch what happens here it puts them into this block like so now, if I just zoom that up a bit so you can see what's actually happening. So title, first name, surname, these are just the fields. Split the title for some reason, don't know why. I'll just delete that off. So 
you need to put a space between all of these. And then if you click on ABC, you can see what that says. That just gives you the code. And then that button there previews what that code would look like. But I'm not going to do it like that. I'm going to use one of the preset options. This tool gives you a preset layout, which I quite like. So I'm just going to use that. Click OK to that. Drops it in over on this page. Just bring it and position it into wherever you want it to be. Click on the preview results. And you see you get these little symbols, which means there's text in overflow in Publisher. So you need to make this box bigger. Still in overflow. You make it bigger like so. However big it needs to be. Now in terms of spacings and things like that, you've got to go and adjust the spacing if you don't want the spacing on there between lines see if that makes a difference yeah it's slightly better but and you don't need the box that big now so you might be able to bring it down but you've got to make sure that there's enough space some addresses are longer than others so there's enough space i think for that now back to the mailings tab and um, what you can do then is use these navigation arrows to go through your database just to check that everything is correct and if it is not correct you change it in the source data not here so everything looks okay so far so that's good back to the beginning so the last process is to finish the merge click on that so you can merge this to the printer or what I want to do is merge it to a new publication so it will give me many, many copies of this, or 15 copies of this document. So I'll click on that one. It creates a new publication, and you can see all the documents coming up down this side. Lots of different documents for each record in the database. So they've got the first page. You can see it there. And if I go back up on this side to the top, there's the second page, there's the address block. There, that's the bit that would go into the window. And if I go onto the address block onto the next one, that's the bit that goes in the window. So where you put the address block block is up to you. It's totally up to you where you put that. So you could have it on this actual front page. I could have put that there and not if I just cut that just to show you but you would do that before you did the merge so let's put it underneath it's gone on the top there let's move it down there as long as it doesn't go over any text you could have that bear in mind it has to fit into the window so you don't want it to be in the way of this but you can just readjust these text boxes you can move this one you can move that one they're all text boxes. That's how Publisher works. It's just text boxes. And sometimes the boxes are overlaid and you have like that was overlaid there. You have to sort of move things around and eventually you get that. So that has to fit in the window, but that's basically how you do a mail merge. It's how you do a mail merge in word as well. And you just use a data source and you bring it into the document and position it wherever you want. So you can do it for envelopes. Yeah, I've done a video on um, email merge already. And this is just, if you're going to post it, this is how you do it. So hopefully that's of use and you enjoyed that. And I'll see you on the next one. Thank you for your time.